So the third section is about the formations and the period map, but the period map I will leave it for the next time and I will do it for you. Maybe I can define it if I have time, but I won't say anything besides the definition, if at all. So uh, the formations, uh, I will consider the formation to be the following. So uh, if so, if S is a scheme or an analytic space, a family of anti canonical pairs is or what, what did we call it? Lock, lock canonical? Anti-canonical, anyway. What, what I'm talking about is this a pair of Y, Z, where Z is the cycle of question of pairs. So a family is a, a scheme or, 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 or you know, analytic space Y, curvy Y over S, where uh, pi is smooth and proper. And and also some relative Cartier divisor in Y. Such that um, well, such that D is equal to some union of, uh, of some irreducible components uh, that are Smooth, reducible components that are smooth, and this is uh, formal crossings. That's a relative Cartier divisor, which is normal crossings. And uh, such that I restricted to D is locally trivial. And such that each fiber is a log canonical pair. So that um, and, and such that each fiber is a log canonical pair. So, so the picture is uh, this, this, and every time you have any uh, any out, any um, point in S, the fiber over that will be uh, some y sub s, which is well, y sub s, and and d restricted to to s will be some log canonical pair. Maybe maybe I'll call it like this. Um, so we will work with F being an analytic space connected. And also, we will need to assume that each uh, that the orientation has been chosen in each fiber. So assume uh, uh, S is an analytic space which is connected. And that you have chosen an orientation. in the uh, anti-canonical divisor of each fiber. So the, the idea is that you have a base S, and you have a family of, uh, you have some kind of uh, uh, 
space y, which is which has a mass, which is sort of like a projection, and then uh, and over, over each point, the fiber that you will see will be some some uh, some y y s v s this is zero y is zero v s zero, where this is some uh, log canonical pair. I don't know how to charge it, and then if this is S, um, this is some other uh, well, canonical pair by S, D, S. And, and we say that um, <coughs> one is a deformation of the other if they, if, they, if they are fibers of the same family. So, um, definition. Uh, y d and y prime d prime are deformation equivalent if they are both fibers of the same family of the rock connected base. They're both over some base S, which by the way, it doesn't need to be reduced, uh, doesn't need to be irreducible or, or reduced. Uh, it doesn't have to be reduced. <clears throat> and this is an equivalent in the equivalent relation. And the deformation of the formation of yd will be a family such that one of the fibers is yd everything else so so if, if this is yd then everything else is a deformation and you will call the family itself you will call it a deformation of yd so it's it's basically a diagram it's a cartesian diagram Where you have your family over S, you have a point, and over that point, the fiber is precisely Y, well, YT. Remember that this carries that some device that we're also restricting to the fiber. This is an equation. So um, from the from last time we saw that the minimal um, that the minimal log uh, uh, log canonical pairs so the uh, minimal. There was a list which was like, like there were three examples with P2. Uh, there were two examples with Fn where n is not equal to 1, and another two examples with F02. And I don't remember the, the self intersections, but all, what I want to say is, is that. In the cases uh, F0 and F2, where you have um, the divisor, there were some 
there were two examples. The, the one that's, that where D is irreducible, the one that, that's like a like a nodal one pair. Uh, one question: You you saying both canonical pairs or anti-canonical pairs? Yeah. Uh, what what word did we use? Anti. Anti. Okay. So uh, between, uh, if, if you take the, the case where D is irreducible, you take F2 and F0, and you can show that uh, they are actually deformation equivalent. And from the, from the list, actually, that's the only, the only two that are deformation equivalent to each other. The only other minimal ones are not deformation equivalent. So theorem, if you fix um, a, 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 a tuple of self-intersection numbers, there are finitely many deformation types uh, for each, for, for, for fixed. The name of self intersection system. So how to show this, first um, we look at the, I should, uh, I should look at the table now because uh, I will need the self-intersections. The self so here the, it was 1, 1, 1, 1, 4, 9. Actually, there were three of these. <coughs> so these are the two ones that are the information that belong to each other. And if you look at the self-intersection sequence on each of these, uh, you see, and, and, and you take into account that every time that you blow up, the self-intersection of the of the of the anti-canonical divisor uh, goes down by one. Then, um, then you can see that the largest that the, that d squared can be is actually nine, just from from looking at uh, at these cases and knowing that anything else has to be lower. So we can do induction on, on minus two squared, and we start with with uh, d squared equal to minus nine. That's our base case, and the, and and we and when we do induction there. So if first if d squared is uh, equal to minus nine, then 
yt has to be the SVT2. It has to be exactly this case. So this case is it's only one family. It's only one um, one possibility. And if if uh, if you you're given so if if you're given now a, a bunch of numbers that are supposed to be the soft intersection. Um, there are two possibilities um, for a for a so if if a, if y d has self intersection this there are two possibilities either y d is already minimal in which case it has to be only one of these, which is a finite list. Uh, so it can be either minimal uh, y is already minimal, and and that's that means that it's has to be one of these. Or if it's not minimal, then y d is a blow up of something. Um, of uh, y prime d prime, where d prime has, and, and this is the point, d prime has um, bigger d squared. Um, so it's either a corner blow up or a or or an interior blow up. So like a toric one or a non-toric one. So if this is a blow up of a point over a point, uh, this uh, it can be. Their corner or, or interior. Something like Like that, and for example, if it's an interior blow up, uh, what does he mean? Uh, you can see what the exact uh, what the what the self intersection sequence of of uh, of the previous um, of the previous uh, uh, or the one that you blow up is. So, um, so the thing is. Uh, So, so the point is, uh, this one has smaller uh, d squared, uh, yeah, uh, bigger d squared. So by induction on minus d squared, uh, you you can assume that there's finitely many uh, there's finitely many. Um, uh, deformation families, uh, deformation types with uh, with the with the self intersection sequence of this guy, and then the the key is that well, if you do a corner blow up, there's nothing to do. I mean, you can only do finitely many corner blow ups, the one one in each point. And if you have done a not toric blow up, if you do an interior blow up, the point is. So I should have, I should have, so by induction 
uh, there is there are finitely many information types. With the self, with the same self intersection as intersection as as y prime d prime, and if you have done a corner uh, block, then uh, there's finitely many more uh, uh, deformation types that you will get. And if you have done an interior blowup, the point is that. Uh, if you blow up, if you have two interior points and you blow up one of them and you blow up another one, these two possibilities are deformation equivalent to each other. Um, how to show that? I believe you have to write down explicitly the uh, um, this is not like obvious for me, but I think you have to write down specifically what the what the family is. But the point is, if you blow up in the same in, in, in if you blow up an interior point in a in the same component, no matter which one you do, the the results are, are, the, the blow ups are going to be deformation equivalent to each other. So you get only, again, finitely many uh, information types. And that's how you create that. So you, you also think the fact that you can go down simultaneously to minus one curve. You have a family above. It's not like a, you have a, a family with minus, minus one curves, you can collapse them simultaneously. I got the family of the world. It is part of the thing. It's just like family of the family, family of many? No, if you have like, so you say that each thing above is a blow up of something below. Yes. And you have said that the family above comes from the family below, below right? Yeah. yeah and then, I, I, and then I, like a simultaneous, like this, we talked about that you can simultaneously blow down. Minus one curves. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm just counting how many. I'm only counting how many, how many new okay, information like types I'm creating, right? I mean, you, you can go down in probably several ways, right? Good. So you, there is not a unique way to go down. It oh, but, but, but that at most will give it like some of them are yeah. all already information equivalent between each other, but, but. The, but but it's still there, there are kind of many, that's yeah. all that I want to, I want to say. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm counting more than there are. That's like, yeah, okay. so I, okay. right. so it's still fine. But it's still fine. Yeah. So, okay. We will do some deformation of theory. And we will see how far we get. So, I will denote by this depth of y, the given uh, so given a pair y d, I denote by this the functor. It's a functor that goes from analytic spaces to sets, which to every base, it assigns all the possible families over S that satisfy what we saw before, but such that, such that one fiber is uh, Y. Such that it's flat, uh, whatever, however. <laughs> so 
So consider the following uh, sheets. Consider the following sheets. Um, Ty of minus log d, by which I mean the dual of uh, omega y log d. So this is the sheaf of uh, one forms uh, omega such that both omega and d omega have at most logarithmic poles along d. And if you dualize, what you get is ty of um, uh, minus log t, which will be the the um, vector fields that are tangent to, to d. So they are tangent to each of the components. So it turns out that this, like some results in the permission theory, this uh, sheet is actually what governs the, the deformation functor or the, the, character, the, the features of the deformation functor that I just uh, wrote. So um, here, the fact that if you do h zero of this, h one and h two, uh, h zero uh, turns out to be the Lie algebra of the group automorphisms. Uh, H1 is the Zariski tangent space to this functor. By which we mean basically the infinitesimal deformations. I guess of degree one. Or for just infinitesimal deformations. First, First order, order. yeah. The order one, yeah. yeah. And this is the abstraction space. So the same way, uh, if we were only deforming y, then uh, the, infinite, the first order infinitesimal deformations would be like h one of y t y. Then if it turns out that if if you are deforming y and d, uh, then uh, um, it's it, this is and the obstruction is like every every infinitesimal deformation of order one. You want to extend it to a uh, to a um, to a order to a bigger order. Then the obstructions tell you whether you can do that or not. If you don't have the obstructions. You can always do that. So. Observe that that we have um, a 
this this sheath uh, sits in a in an ex, in an exact sequence, which is the point array residue sequence. So the first that we will show is, is it's actually that this sheath is self-dual. So this omega-1 uh, is equal to its dual. And uh, to show that, so lemma. Omega one log d is isomorphic canonically to t y log d, and the proof is you do a pairing between omega one log d and itself. Um, this lands in omega two. Uh, y log d, but uh, omega 2 uh, is k, and then this is ky of d, which is, since g is anti-canonical, this is just a trivial divisor. And, um, and this pairing is a perfect pairing. So this uh, identifies this, the, the dual of this. This is the same thing as its dual, which is what we have defined as one minus one. So now, uh, if we look at the short exact sequence that we have here, this is isomorphic to ty minus log t. And if you do the long exact sequence in cohomology, you will be able to compute or say something about these spaces. So let's do that. Uh, so take uh, the long exact sequence in cohomology. So you have uh, zero H uh, zero omega. Well, this is zero because the, it's a rational surface. And then you have H zero of this, which is the same as this. And then sum of H zero of O di then you have h1 h1 uh, h1 of this which is 0 and h2 of omega this uh, of omega, which is again zero because this is a rational surface. H two and then zero. So what we get at the end is. Uh, the following. So first, 
first uh, you have that H2 of this is zero uh, because if it's here. Um, so that means already that the space is unobstructed, that this functor is unobstructed. And then what's left is an exact sequence of four terms where you have um, H0, then uh, the sum of, well, each, uh, each of these is a copy of C, and it can be interpreted as C times the class of this divisor, uh, where this is sent to H, H1 of, of omega 1, which is actually the same thing as H2 of Y, um, C. And and uh, and that goes to H one. And this goes to zero. And this this map is the one that's sending a, a, a divisor to its class. This you can think of almost like the Picard group that sends it to the C. Um, so therefore, uh, another conclusion is that uh, this map, if I call it delta, then H0, so H1, H2 is 0, H0 is the kernel of delta, and H1 is the co-kernel of delta. So we have this, this, and this. So for all right. uh, first. This function is unobstructed because H2 of that is zero. Second, uh, the dimension of the space of, uh, of the series detention space, so the dimension of, uh, of the functor. It's the dimension of its surface tangent space, which is the dimension of H1 of um, Ty minus log D, which is um, the dimension of this co kernel. So H, it is the dimension of H2 modulo. Um, be generated by the classes of the divisors. But we have given a name. If if you if you do instead of C, you do Z, which gives you the same uh, ranks here. We have given a name to this. This is well. This is the complexification of uh, of the lattice that we have called uh, lambda of one comma D. Or the, the rank of this planet, which was the um, the orthogonal to the to the to all of these guys, and then also y d is infinitesimally rigid. That 
means that it doesn't have any any order, any even first order deformations. It's infinitesimally rigid if this is zero. So even only if this uh, deformations, uh, this um, the risky tangent space has dimension zero. So if and only if this rank is zero. Which is the same as to say that the classes of all the devices should be one through dr. They generate the entire Picard group. Or, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. D1 to the dr, a spam. H2 of YC. And finally, about H0 of this, of this sheaf, um, the dimension of the group of automorphisms is the rank of of this, so it's the rank of the kernel of del, uh, which is, we have actually given a name to this, this is S. Remember, like, it's like the, 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 the kernel of sending all the divisors um, to the Picard group, and then it has some kernel. It's S, but it, it can be 0, 1, or 2. And it's too precisely when it's stored. So in the mass complex uh, explanation to H mass of the risk intelligence is the information from the I thought that as a Uh, I don't know. I I, I I see it as the third order the from in the small deformations, but I don't understand what what it means. To do with the the schema, the object, object. I, I see. Is there anything what? It's locally representable. Oh, oh, okay, okay, and okay. You don't say that. Right. Right. Yeah. That's true. Um. And then one remark. So if if Y D is a thought pair, um then you cannot deform it because uh, if you deform it, I think you get the same self intersection numbers, but the self intersection numbers determine a top pair, and that's what the top means. So uh, then it has to be infinitesimally rigid. So that means that this lattice has to be zero. Okay. So now we consider uh, another uh, deformation functor. So the, the deformation factor that we were considering uh, had to fix each component of di, each component di, uh, but now we will allow that to be, that to change. So um, we 
we consider that the, the functor def y uh, comma d, which is the deformations of y that, uh, that keep d as a divisor. Uh, but the corresponding deformations in D may not be locally, locally trivial. So that every time you have a deformation of yd in particular, you have a deformation of d itself, because it's not locally trivial data. So there's a fun, there's a natural transformation. So there is a, a natural morphism between functors. So proposition um, this functor is unobstructed and this is smooth. This, this natural transformation is um, The definition of the natural transformation being smooth is something like if you evaluate at a, at a, at a base, you get like uh, subjective morphism. Which is kind of strange, but. Um, hmm? Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like subjecting the, the it's not that strange. Um maybe I can say something about the proof. If you consider uh, the following two term complexes, so C to be a Ty goes to the normal of D over of, uh, Y over D, and D to be the following the same thing but restricted to D. Then uh, it turns out, and this is again by some uh, deformation theory um, knowledge that um, this H one of this is what you have to compute to get this risk dependent space of uh, this functor. Um, H2 is the obstructions, G1 
to the same functor. And h1 of this guy is um, the tangent space to, to this other functor. Uh, so if you want to show that this is unobstructed, for example, you have to show that this h2 is 0 and so on. And so we need to show that uh, if you do h2, this is a zero. This is the same thing as saying that this is unobstructed. And you also need to show that uh, if you restrict the cohomologies, that you get something surjective. Which is the same thing as saying that this morphism of functors is And again, you have to chase some sequence. Um, which is uh, the following. So between this and this, there's, a, there's an exact triangle, which I'll, I will write as an exact sequence, but you have this, goes to C, goes to D, goes to zero. You take the, the short exact sequence, the, the long exact sequence, so for example, H1 of C goes to H1 of D goes to H2 of this. Goes to H2 of C, and then this is H2 of D, D, which is already zero. So if you, if you want to show that this is zero, you want to show that this is zero, if you want to show that this is surjective, so it suffices to show that this is zero. If this is zero, this has to be surjective and this has to be zero. And this is, if you do ser duality, this is uh, ser dual to um, To ohm to h zero of because this is in y so h uh, to, it's mentioned two so it's h zero of of um, omega one which is zero because I, again y is a rational set so this is zero. This is surjective, this is zero. And a corollary that follows from this and from other results, so I, I can't show which with it, uh, but 
but nevertheless it is a corollary of that. And this is maybe easier to, 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 to picture. Uh, is the following is take the singular uh, points uh, which are the, 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 the singular points of the, of the divisor which are the points where, where the where these rational curves meet it's a finite number of points take any subset of those so then there exists some deformation, some family over some base, some connected base. So some deformation over a smooth connected base. Yes. Such that, uh, well, okay, the, 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 this, the, the zero fiber, say, is yd. So, so let's say that uh, given yd, take some points that are singular in the, in the divisor, in the, and here and here's uh and, and here's uh, the interesting thing is that such so that the general fiber um I'll call it y prime d prime is y prime d prime where d prime is the smoothing Of, um, of D at the points that you chose, or or if 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 T is all of the singular uh, uh, points, then then this is a smooth uh, elliptic. This is saying basically that if you have you have one of these pairs like this, and then you choose, let's say that you choose one point that where these things meet, then you can deform it so that the general fiber is. Something like this. The smooth, smooth, smooth curve, so it has my, uh, R minus one components. Uh, so, for example, if in particular, if R is bigger than or equal to three, you can deform. Y D to Y prime D prime, where of length R minus one and an intersection sequence which is going to be D one all the way through D R minus two. Let's say that you smooth the, the last one. This is going to be the intersection sequence. And the charge is one more if you do the computation. The charge is one more than the charge of the 